a concern in my heart is, and it was confirmed by the, by the prayer before the time, and people had dreams, etc. God wants to give you the people his, their breakthroughs. God wants to give you your breakthrough. God wants to give you your healing. And sometimes people cannot maintain their healing because of a couple of things. Now I tell you, if you do not walk in forgiveness, you will lose your healing. I can pray for you, and you can be healed here right in a meeting, but you got something against someone, you will lose your healing, and that's a problem. So a person that I pray for, that receives his healing, but he cannot forgive, that person is wasting my time. He's wasting my time and my spiritual energy, my spiritual power. He's wasting. Because it's not easy to pray for you for healing. It takes a lot. Go and ask any man of God. It takes a lot. I need to seek the Lord for healing. Because I'm not Jesus, so I need to go to Jesus. He's the healer and he's got the power to heal. So I need to go to Jesus and I need to ask him for the gift of healing. If you are sick, I need to ask him. I need to spend time with him. And I need to wrestle with him to give the gift of healing to certain people. Or bring about their breakthrough. It doesn't, it doesn't just come like that. It doesn't come cheap. It's free, but never cheap. The man of God that prays for deliverance or healing or breakthrough, he needs to go spend time with God and see God for your healing. Now, if you got unforgiveness in your heart and bitterness in your heart, and I pray for you for healing, you mess with my time. You mess, my, mess with my time and you waste the spiritual power that I went to get from Jesus. Amen. So that's why it's so important. That's why I always preach about forgiveness and unforgiveness. You should not have that in your heart. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says we should hold nothing against no one. I will ask you for a couple of things. And I will say to you this morning, you should learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Amen. Say to number, you should learn how to forgive. I don't say you should learn to forgive. I say, say you should learn how to forgive. Jesus in Matthew 20 was breathing on the apostles, on the apostles specifically. And he breathed on them, the apostles, not all Christians, the apostles. And he said to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. And if you do not forgive them their sins, they will not be forgiven. And that means there are certain people that they don't have to forgive. And they should not forgive. And I will ask you this morning the question, do you think Jesus forgave Judas for what he has done to him by, bet by betraying him? Do you think he forgave, he forgave him? I wonder if I ask this morning here in a meeting, who will say he forgave him? Lift up your hands. Don't you think he forgave Judas? Huh? He didn't. He didn't. Had Jesus unforgiveness in his heart? No, nothing. Nothing. He didn't forgive him. Because only people that come and ask, say sorry is the people that can be forgiven. Give God a hand. Amen. You cannot forgive a person that didn't come and, come and say sorry. How can you do that? The Bible says if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we confess our sin, I mean, I don't waste forgiveness. Forgiveness is, comes from God. It comes from heaven. It's very precious. It's an amazing, precious gift. And I'm not going to dish it out to everyone that doesn't want to say sorry. No ways. Because it will fall onto the ground. I don't play with God's forgiveness. When someone can come and he says sorry, and he's really sorry, I say, I forgive you. In Jesus' name. Amen? Okay? Jesus, I say that today to you, Jesus didn't forgive Judas. Because if Jesus would have forgiven him, he would have been in heaven. And he's not in heaven today, he's in hell. Very sad to say to you, but he's not in heaven, he's in hell. Do you think Jesus held anything against Judas? Second question. The first one was that you think he, do you think he forgave him? No, he didn't. 
Judas never came to say sorry. He never came to say sorry. So he, he's not in heaven, he's in hell. The second question I ask you, do you think Jesus held anything against Judas? Who think he held anything against him? No. He held nothing. He didn't forgive him, but he held nothing against him. Because our Bible says to us, and Jesus teaches us himself in Mark 11, we should hold nothing against no one. Secret. In this country, and in many other countries, um, murder and rape of women is a very serious problem today. Do you think I forgive the rapists that, for, that rape women? You can ask me. No, I don't. Are you crazy? I don't. Do you think I forgive the murderer? No. No, I'm not going to forgive him. But if the murderer come today and he say to me, I am sorry. Can you please pray for me? I'm really sorry and I repent. I've done wrong. Will I forgive him then? For sure, because my God will forgive him. Give, him a, give God a hand. Amen. But if he doesn't come and say sorry, there's no forgiveness for him. Amen. Only sins that get confessed and people repent of that sin, only for those sins there is forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, if you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. If you do not forgive them their sins, they will not be forgiven. Amen. Okay, let's come back again. The murderers and the rapists in this country. Do I forgive them? No, I don't. Pastor, you got unforgiveness in your heart. No, nothing. If anyone come and say sorry, I will forgive him. If he doesn't say sorry, I cannot forgive him. Amen. Amen. You should learn how to forgive. Do not treat forgiveness cheap. Forgiveness comes by confession and repentance. In Jesus' name. And the people who rape and the people who murder should learn not to do that. Because the consequences is severe from heaven's sight, from heaven's part. Amen? Okay, my other question is, do I hold anything against the rapists or the murderers in this country? No, nothing. I don't forgive them, but I hold nothing against them. Is there unforgiveness in my heart towards the rapists and the murderers in this country? Nothing. Nothing. I hold nothing against them, and there's no unforgiveness and bitterness in my heart towards them. I just know they do extremely wrong. I don't forgive them. But I hold nothing against them. And there's no unforgiveness in my heart towards them. No bitterness in my heart towards them. That's why I say this morning to you, you should learn how to forgive. Read your Bible and see what Jesus did. Did Jesus forgive Judas? No, he didn't forgive him. Did Jesus hold anything against him? Nothing. Had Jesus held any bitterness in his heart towards Judas? Nothing. Nothing. Did you know that, Jesus, that Judas was sorry for what he did? The Bible says he was sorry. He went and he threw the money back to the scribes and the Pharisees. Take your money because I've betrayed an innocent man. But he didn't go to Jesus and say, sorry. He didn't say sorry. He didn't go to confess. He sent to Jesus. He went and he hanged himself. That is a very dumb thing to do. If Judas came to his senses and he would have went to Jesus and begged for forgiveness, say, you know, I did a terrible thing. Can you please forgive me? Jesus would have forgiven him. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. But he did not. So your Bible Judas today is in hell. He even was sorry for what he did, but he didn't confess it to Jesus. So he's in hell forever. He went and he hanged himself. The Bible says he burst open. And he's, he's, he's in hell today, forever and ever, because he didn't confess his sin to the one he did wrong. If you want to get forgiveness for something, you need to confess to the people you have done wrong to. The Bible says, confess your sin to one another so that you might be healed. Confession is extremely important. If we confess our sin to God, He will forgive us and cleanse us 
of all unrighteousness. But if we cannot forgive, for confess our sin and say, sorry, no forgiveness for us. So if you say this morning, I forgive the murderers in this country, I forgive all the rapists, you are very dumb and not in line with God's word. And you confuse the angels and you confuse the spiritual realm. You even confuse the devils. You can only forgive people who came and said, sorry, confess their sins. Even Judas, even, although he was sorry for what he did, he was sorry, but he didn't confess. He knew he did the wrong thing. He's still today in hell because he didn't went to Jesus to say, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. Amen. Satanist, you should learn how to forgive. Someone owe you money. He didn't pay you money back. And he did business with you and he took you for a, a, a raw deal. Should you forgive him? No, you should not forgive him. Because if you forgive him, he's going to get away and do it to another man. And another man, and another person, and another person. So he's getting away all the time. But if you do not forgive him, he's bound. And he cannot easily do it to another man, because heaven is now following him. Justice is following him from the heaven. If the earth and the courts of earth does not have justice, then the heavens will. I mean, so don't forgive a person that owe you large amounts of money or that you, that you in with a raw deal. Don't forgive them. But you should hold nothing against them. You should have no bitterness in your heart, but don't forgive him. Because if you forgive him, he's getting away with it. He's going to do it to another person. Then you are the reason why you do it to another one and another one and another one. He should learn not to cheat people. So you uphold him in your prayer. Say, Lord, Stop him from doing that to other people as well. The same with the murderer. Lord, stop him from doing it to other people as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. We don't go, well, go along with darkness, but we expose darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan never, you should hold nothing against no one. This is a secret and only God's grace can help you to do that. Amen. Hate no one. Hate no one. Say to never, you must hate no one. Hold nothing against no one. But for, I tell you, forgiveness is not cheap. Forgiveness only comes when a person confesses. Only when he confesses. But you should make sure that you hold nothing against no one. In Jesus' name. But when someone does something to you personally, you should forgive him. Because if you do not forgive him, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. So if someone has done something to you, you should forgive him. Amen? I say someone did something to you, you should forgive him. But if you know a person is going to go on with his wrong things and harm other people, hold him accountable to the inner heavens. Hold him accountable to God. So that God can stop him and convict him and bring him to his senses. And God's discipline might be on his life, so he might stop doing that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The people who murder in this country, the people who rape women in this country, do I forgive them? No, because they didn't, towards, they didn't, do, didn't do it to me. It's not a personal thing. Anything that people do to you personally, you should forgive. You understand? So you should learn how to forgive in Jesus' name. Do not let people go off the hook because people need to be disciplined also by the heavens. Jesus said, if you hold the sins of any against them, if you retain these sins, these sins are retained. For what reason? So they might learn not to do it again. Now God's discipline might be on them. And you hold them accountable to the heavens. You say, God, can you please deal with these people? Amen. I pray fire on these people. But not the kind of fire that the apostles called on the people when Jesus rebuked them. It was once upon a time when the apostles asked Jesus, Lord, shall we call fire on these evil people? Jesus rebuked them and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. It was not wrong to call the fire. It was their hearts. They called the fire because they had unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred in their heart. I call fire on many people 
But I've number one called fire on myself. On my own wrongdoings. I call fire. Because I don't want no nonsense in my life. So I start with myself. I call fire on myself. But if I call fire on you because I want, I, I've got something against you, then my heart is very evil. But the fire is a very good thing. So I, number one, pray for God's fire on my own wrongdoing. Where I make mistakes, where there's still things in my life that's not pleasing God, I pray every day. Father, I pray fire in my own life. Fire on my sin. Fire on my mistakes. Fire on my weaknesses. Fire on my failure in the name of Jesus. And so I do it with many other people in Jesus' name because I love them. Give God a hand. Amen. We're going to read that scripture where the apostles ask Jesus, shall we call fire on them? They had a wrong heart. Jesus rebuked them. When you want to do things like this, you should have a good heart in Jesus' name. Not a heart of hatred in Jesus' name.